When the wind is right, planes taking off from Mitchell International climb into the southern sky directly above the Michael Cudahy Nature Preserve. And on September 6, 1985, a Midwest Express DC-9 was following that same flight path when something went horribly wrong. It was on a clear, sunny afternoon just like this that Flight 105 took off from runway 19R here at Mitchell. The plane was bound for Atlanta with 31 people on board, many of them employees of Kimberly Clark, the company that gave rise to Midwest Express. According to the NTSB, Flight 105 was at an altitude of only about 450 feet when cracks in the right engine led to a catastrophic loss of power. The DC-9 should have been able to continue flying with only one engine, and for a few seconds it did. But then investigators say the pilot made a fatal mistake, pressing down hard on the rudder control pedals. The plane rolled a full 90 degrees, stalled, and dove nose first into the ground, fewer than 2,000 feet from the end of the runway. The battered cockpit voice recorder would later reveal the final and only words that came from the crew, we've got an emergency. There was just a big flash. 86-year-old Otto Satula still lives and works near the crash site, and he was among the first on the scene that day. Because I knew the woods, I knew the paths in the woods, I knew how I could get there. And I ran back there and all I could see the, the ball of fire back there. And I didn't know if anyone needed any help or something like that, I, I could have helped, but there was nothing to help anyone there. But a few people did survive the initial impact. In grim newspaper accounts, one witness described seeing a woman still strapped to her seat, surrounded by fire and screaming. Another said the pilot died, still clutching the yoke of his doomed aircraft. You could make out the fuselage of the plane and uh, some of the people on it. In 1985, Father Robert Betts was the chaplain for the Milwaukee Fire Department. And with the wreckage still smoldering, he was called in to give the last rites to passengers and crew. All the bodies were burned beyond recognition, and so it's... In a certain sense, it's, it, it's not like a human being because the facial features aren't there and all of that. But on the other hand, you know it is. And laying there with the victims, Betts noticed something odd, a testament to the sheer speed and force of the crash that he says he'll never forget. There was a, a deer that uh, had died and was just laying there on its side. So evidently, you know, it came down so fast that even the deer didn't get out of the way. Beth says many first responders also became victims that day, overwhelmed by the loss of life and haunted by the graphic images they'd been exposed to. As first responders, you're always there to save someone and there's no one to save. Aerial photos taken within hours of the crash show a burned out debris field knifing into the eastern edge of the woods. And 28 years later, the preserve still bears the scars. A notch in the tree line where nothing but tall grass now grows. And further in, a few blackened stumps. Together with the planes passing overhead, these are the only reminders that this is the site of the worst air disaster in Wisconsin history. Well, you can kind of imagine that's just exactly the path they took and dove right down in here. Returning to the woods for the first time since the day of the crash, Father Betts searches for more overt signs of the tragedy and is struck by their absence. Look at look how nature has reclaimed the area. And just as the woods have healed, Father Bob's memories of that horrific day have also now been softened by time and the surety of his faith. It's hard at the time, but at the same time I feel this kind of energy inside because I know the privileged position that I'm in, in a sense, in representing the church and the Lord in a, in a serious way like that. You know, in a sense, there's nothing you can do there anymore. And so you say, well, where is God in all of this? And it's like, well, God is there.